We're going to be looking at the lab too. Um, this is going to be super basic on how to run this really. This is for CPE 187, just going over how to run this and what everything is inside of here for embedded systems design. We're going to be using our Kyle, Keel, K-E-I-L, whatever that is. My 3D printer is running in the background, so if there's a little humming, that's what that is. Um, we should have all this right here in a folder on our computer. Now, this will be downloaded from the previous video, it's in the playlist link below, right? but the whole way in how to download everything. So now we're going to start it. Starting this, we're going to go into Labware. And then from Labware, we're going to want to go into our Lab2 Hello Launchpad. So we enter this. From here, we're going to open the UVision 4 project. So we're going to open this inside of here. I'll have notes and kind of like how this goes in a play in the description below the like button. Um, in the playlist, there's just more videos about uh, this material for embedded systems design. So up here, there's a few things we should want to note. Um, there is going to be a debug button up here. It looks like a D inside of a magnifier. On the top left, we have just a lot of simple, simple kind of options that are very similar to Eclipse if you're familiar with that. And then we can hit debug to run this. Now, for the board that we're using, we are going to be using these options. So to see our options, this is very, very important. We click this right here, and then this comes up. So with these options displayed, we have our OS that we're using for our target. Um, we're not touching device. We're going to touch target and debug. So if we want to use our real board, we're going to use this right here. If we want to use a simulator, we click Use Simulator. We can click OK from here. Now if we have any problems with our project, we want to get a build. We can go to a clean targets, it'll clean our targets. And then we can go to build project, and it will automatically build our project. From here, we can assemble our code. We can hit the debug right here. It's going to load. It's going to say evaluation mode, running with code size limit 32k. It's not a problem. Should load up like this, and then we have all this information here. So this is what everything looks like. Now, this is a really wide view of it, so I'll drag things in a little bit. We have all of this. Not everything is important here for what we are doing. On the left, we can see our core registers. Notice this is very similar to if following along with like the notes class material, we have our R0 going to our R15. We have our assembly code up top, so that's going to be this assembly code. And then we have our C code on the bottom, right here, main.c. This is our main C file, who we would be submitting. So with this, we want to test our simulated board. So we can go into peripherals, we can click Texas port F, and this is going to come up. Now, we are going to want to grade this to see if our code is correct. So before we walk through our code, let's click the grade first. So we click grade. It's going to test some things. It's going to circle through our LEDs. It's going to test everything. And then it's going to give us a score. We can see we've ended with a score of 100. And that's exactly what we wanted. If we look at our command window, we can see all the tests that it's running. And we can see that we've passed all of them. So we've ended with a 100 here. Now, we're going to go, before we run through this code, onto our real board really quickly. So the real board, uh, if I don't have a picture of it or if I don't have it, it's just a red board. It's in the notes in the description below the like button. Um, it's going to be somewhere in the notes, just a little picture of it. With this board, first you need to turn it on. You want to make sure you use the connected data cable that it comes with. Uh, once you turn the board on, it should be flashing. Now, the USB needs to go into the debug side. So once it's inside of there, that's the top of the board. So once it's inside of there, what we're going to do is we're going to end our debug here. We want to go into our options and switch their debug into the actual board right here. Now, we can clean our project if we want. If this doesn't work, I do have a solution for it, and it's the previous video where we set everything up because I had a lot of trouble with it. So once we switch that, we can go into our debug. It's going to load up. We have our evaluation mode, and then it's going to go into this right here. Now that we are in our physical board, 
it should stop blinking once we're in this debug mode and we can click the grading button right here now what we're going to want to do what's different than what we did in the simulated one is we're going to want to run our code and that's going to be this up here or we can press F5 so we can click this and now our board should be flashing and we want to click grading again I guess it unchecked it now it's telling us to wait it's checking the connection it's telling us to wait again now it says press and hold switch one so we can press and hold it it's going to be running our tests and then it says release so we're going to release the switch and it says we are done let's look at our grade it is 100 so we have passed this so that is how we would look at this now let's look at our main.c file inside of here it's telling us that it's our first program to run on a launch pad we're going to run this program without modification as our lab too so we're not changing anything here if the left switch switch one is not pressed the led toggles a blue red pressing the led toggles a blue green and this is exactly what it does see i'm pressing it here you see the value is changing with our watch one here so that's just on the physical board now we have our documentation section our main.c this is telling us what happens it runs on these two boards we have the hello launchpad and then we input from our pf4 and output on the pf3 2 and 1 so those are just the leds we have authors of this and the date that it was created we have our launchpad built in hardware we have the description of our hardware so switch 1 is the left switch negative logic pf4 on our launchpad switch 2 is the right switch this is negative logic pf0 on the launchpad Let's describe this negative logic that it's using right here. Negative logic means the opposite of positive logic. And positive logic means that once you press something, this is positive logic. Positive logic, again, you press something, that means it goes high. The voltage goes high. It turns on. So that means negative logic is the opposite. So negative logic means when you press something, instead of turning on, it turns off. So that's important to note right there. Then we have our red, blue, and green, and they're connected to our different ports on our launch pad. These are just comments here for C. Now inside of here, we're going to include this, I'm assuming it's a library, and then we want to define all of these ports right here. We have the declarations on the section's global variables, so we're making two longs, in and out, and then we also have functions here. Now these functions are going to be used later after this main um, we're able to call them we see we have this void right here and we have our port f in it right here that's of type void so inside of our main we're going to be initializing enabling um, we have a good stuff on a while loop which we're going to look at we're going to basically always run until we quit we read input toggle the leds and so starting off with this one we're just making a basic main c file uh, we have our initialization right here we are calling this method right here. So we're calling the initialization of the port PF4 and PF2. And we'll look at that in a second. It's a method. We have enable interrupts so that our grader uses interrupts. And then we have a while loop. And this while loop is going to run until our program ends. We read the port 4 into the in. So we're checking if our switch is pressed or not pressed. So if it's zero, it means its switch is pressed. Because remember, when we press it, it turns off, meaning it should be at zero. And then this is going to set this port, or this LED, to be green. Otherwise, so if it's not zero, it means our switch is not pressed. So our LED is going to still be red. And then we have a delay inside of here. After this delay, we're going to have our LED be blue, and then we're going to wait again. And then we're just going to repeat this, checking if our switch is pressed. Next, we have a subroutine to initialize the port F pins for input and outputs. So we have these pins right here. And we have no inputs and no outputs. Um, then we just have some notes here. Five pins are connected to hardware on our launch pad. So we are going to use our previously defined ports on 23 through 34. So these ports we're going to be using inside of here. This is where the bare metal concept programming takes place. Port F is the general purpose input outputs. To look at all ports, we're going to use our board's datasheet PDF. I'm not going to pull it up here. Uh, but it may be in the description below the like button. Hopefully it'll be there. It's pretty helpful. Um, and then we look at the general input output pins here. We have signal descriptions and general purpose GPIOs. 
I know I said I wouldn't go over it, but let's look at this real quick. Chapter 10 in our notes, we have our general input, perverse input output GPIOs. So these are going to tell a lot about what we're doing. We have our general interrupts here. We have signal description. And then basically what's happening with all these pins. Now we can look at each individual subsection inside of here. We have functional dependencies, uh, signal descriptions, initialization and configuration, register maps, and register descriptions that are a part of this. So we can just go through and look at all of the different pins and everything that are for this. We can see that we have these pins right here, these ports, which are going to be useful when we are looking at our code. So that's just a reference to keep in our pocket, and we can use that if we ever need to. The GPIO model is composed of six physical GPIO blocks, each corresponding to an individual GPI port. So we have like port A, we have port B, we have port C, port D, port F, and so on and so forth. So this is the start of our nodes. Um, we can have up to 43 GPIOs depending on our configuration. It's highly flexible, five volts tolerance. And then we have some more notes right here really describing the general purpose input outputs. We can also look at a type of our register map and what's going on here. These are just comments telling us the specific ports. We can see what's going on here, over LEDs and the color that's happening. So we can change our ports and that would probably change the LEDs. So if we look inside our while loop, we have the different LEDs that we're setting it to be right here. LED is green at 0, 8. So if we look at 8, we see we have green. If we wanted to change it to yellow, we would do something like this and just change it to yellow. So that's how that would work. Now there's this delay part down here. So you can just take a look at how that works. Um, there's two types of delays that are talked about. There's the software delay, which is a like dirty delay, and there's a cystic delay, which is where we use hardware to delay. This is a software, so the dirty delay, and this is just because we are basically having this run forever and we're decrementing this every single time that we're running this. So that's how that delay function would work. Again, we call all of our functions right here, where we have all the functions listed right here. We're using them inside of our main, and then this is where we declare everything, um, what ports that we're going to be using, and then we have comments really just telling us what's going on. That is extremely helpful. If we run through these specifically, we can see that line 73 has a clock. We are then going to have some delay after that. We can make some changes. I believe this one is going to be setting the direction of the ports. And to know the different steps to go more into depth, um, there's a specific section in chapter 10. It's going to be section 3, which is the initialization and configuration. This will be in the description below the like button. And it talks about all of these different things inside of here. It's right before register maps. But that's it on how we would run this lab. Again, we're not making any modifications to this code. We're just going over it and displaying it.